Now it might just be me, but this guy's paint job looks a lot like that guy's paint job. But they're they're, they're not working together, right? They're they're not working together. <laughs> Welcome to the last race at Sebring of the week. We are car number 16. We put in a 2027 starting in P7. The guys at the front are six tenths ahead of us, about five, six tenths ahead of us. Uh, this is the highest rated lobby we have been in. I'm going to pull over to the inside immediately as uh, both members of the enemy number one team get past us. We do end up going up the inside of this yellow guy who's currently on our right, so dismissing one of those positions. And then uh, Lightning McQueen gets pushed wide, so we gain uh, two positions. So ultimately, uh, we're back to where we started. This guy uh, from Team GRT, car number 24, just drives into this guy, sends him flying, sends another Lightning McQueen and like three other people off to the side. Anyway, we are just fine. Car number eight ahead goes wide, one of the enemy number one cars. We send it up the inside into corners three, four, and five, and we're going to maintain an inside line. Fortunately for us, he slides out a little bit of oversteer, manages to get back on the track, but he does uh, cede that position to us, and we are now up into P6. So from all of that, we actually moved forward one position, which is freaking awesome for a race start the guys ahead are all super fast and it looks like somebody's going to try and make a move up ahead currently sitting in p6 uh they're too wide a couple of cars behind us as one of the enemy number one cars goes side by side with lightning mcqueen who drives really wide and seeds that position now the car behind us car number three super fast guy i don't know if he had a bad qualifying or a bad start what exactly happened he actually started ahead of us but we knew that he was fast and we were kind of looking for an optimal place to let him through so that neither of us really lose that much time, if any time at all. As we come around the pretty, it's a strange right-hander, this one. You have to take a little bit of that curve. However, we go wide in this instance. Tire on the left side went into the dirt. That's going to bring uh, bring us pretty far back. We lose time to the cars ahead, and car number three is right up on our tail as we enter into the final series of turns before the very long straight on Sebring. And that understeer is really not going to help us, so all sorts of things going wrong at the moment three looks to dive up the inside i'm gonna let him through and then he kind of i mean I'm, I'm gonna let you guys decide what what you think happened here i think that i was staying wide and he kind of just drove into me here's my cockpit view i mean i was giving him space i knew he was there and i felt like I, he had plenty of space and that he just kind of drove into me that curb is considered racing surface so he had to allow me space but decided not to at the end of the day, he ended off the track and I ended with a horrible, horrible run down the straight. So car number eight gets passed from like almost a second back um, before, almost about a second back before we made that final corner and had that incident. So we lost quite a bit of time. You can see how far ahead the car ahead of him is, who is his teammate, uh, by the way. Now there's also this guy. This is McQueen who got sent wide on turn one and he is car number two. So once again, another really fast guy and I'm having the same thoughts. I just want to let this guy through somewhere uh, safely, not have another incident like we just had, and not lose as much time as we just lost. That was kind of the whole goal of letting the other guy pass, and it uh, didn't work out for us. So as we come onto the straight heading in, heading towards turn 7, kind of around turn 6 here at Parabolica, we're going to pull to the left side, and actually we lift off of our throttle, slow down, and let him through up the inside. I know this guy should be super fast. This lobby was extremely highly rated. We are car number 16 at 4, or not, we're, we haven't made it to 4K I rating yet, but we are car number 16 in the high 3Ks. And uh, I know this guy's fast. He's car number two. I'm letting off the throttle once again because I want him to know that I am not looking to make a move on him, and I want him to go as fast as he possibly can. Now, as we come around this corner, I totally forgot to shift down into third gear and look at him drive away from us. We lost probably about a second uh, from staying in fourth gear. I was streaming while I was doing this race and I, I was answering a question or reading chat or something. That's my excuse. Anyway, uh, the gap behind is pretty massive and the guy leading the gap behind is car number 23 who is holding back car number seven and car number nine for me. Really rooting for this guy in my relative right now. This is only, I think we're going, coming around to start lap three and uh, this guy was about three seconds behind us. I wanted him to just hold those guys back for as long as possible and let me run away for as long as I possibly could. Coming across that lap for a 204.42, pretty abysmal, but we made some pretty big mistakes. These are the leaders. We got car number one, car number six, car number four, car number six. Wait, uh, shit. I think, uh, I think that first, that second car was car number five. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, basically what matters is that we are in P8 
And um, car number seven, who is behind car number 23, behind us, is going to make a move into corners three, four, and five up the inside. Looks like he is going to get the drive down, make that one stick. Car number 23 now side by side with car number nine. Uh, and he is going to immediately send it flinging back up the inside into turn seven, the big hairpin. Not really uh, push nine wide, but a very aggressive move still, I'd say. And I think just kind of a dumb move. You can see number nine flashing his headlights. The reason I say that that's a dumb move is that it probably cost, um, it's going to cost nine and 23 a lot of time in the long run. Lightning McQueen up the inside of enemy number one. As we expected, we knew this guy was going to make some good headway. And him doing that is going to bring both of them slightly further back to us. I'm not really that worried about being close to Lightning McQueen. I'm more worried about being close to the people that he is fighting. And um, that is exactly what has happened here. Putting us right within, I'd say, I'd say we're in the slipstream now of car number, I think that's eight ahead of us, enemy number one. Which is perfect because we have this extremely long straight. And it's going to pull us all the way around to finish this lap off with a 203.13, which was our fastest lap of the session. Uh, we are going to follow that up by going super wide, completely missing our braking marker and losing about a second to start our next lap. We do manage to get back on the track. And as you saw, there's still a pretty decent gap to the car behind. So we're not really under any pressure. That is car number seven, however. So there's a possibility that this guy could catch us. He should be faster than us. I rating wise, uh, he's ranked ahead of us, but we'll see. Up ahead, you can see how big the gap has grown. That massive off track in turn one has really messed up this lap for us. Just focusing on hitting apexes, imagining that I have a spotter in my head. I, I turned my spotter off. I have an actual person who uh, wants to spot me, but we haven't, we did it one time. Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, car number five, this is P2, and he is soaking up that slipstream of the leader all of the way down the straight, and they're going to start some fighting here. They have pulled away from the rest of the pack pretty significantly. This is car number four, who's in P3, and he has a pretty huge gap. Uh, the leader is going to take an offensive line into the first corner. This is going to allow car number four to get basically right up behind them by the time they go through corners three, four, and five, and turn the two-horse race at the front into a three-horse race. Uh, I'd say there's probably about a second separating all three of those guys, and that could definitely lend itself to some fighting. I'm realizing it right now as I head, turn, head towards turn seven, and then uh, around the rest of the lap, that everybody's kind of condensing. Lightning McQueen has caught up to the Martini Porsche. In my head, I am now rooting for the Martini Porsche as I want him to defend as hard as he possibly can against McQueen. Uh, so that he brings everybody back to us, mostly himself. I'm not really worried about McQueen, as I've mentioned before. The leaders still in this little group on the next lap. You can see how red hot their brakes are as they come into turns three, four, and five. Heading toward turns seven, and Lightning McQueen is going to make a super late, absolutely stunning move up the inside of Martini, and those are some red hot brakes. I take back what I said about the leaders. That shit was fire. Uh, Lightning McQueen manages to make that move just about stick. He's got the inside for, I think this is turn 10, and this is a great place to have the inside. There's really not much you can do as the outside car there, especially if you're not ahead going into that corner. There is us just about, I'd say, three and a half, maybe four seconds behind McQueen and the Martini car, which is closer than we were in the past. So the plan to let McQueen go past us and cause chaos is working or it's not really chaos. This guy, for reasons unknown to me, is flashing his lights. Perhaps there was a spider on the button binded to his lights and it uh, wouldn't die after multiple smashes, so he had to rapid fire it. Car number four, I am not sure what's going on here. Honestly, I'm, I have no idea. So he just happens to be teammates with uh, the car who gets through there and takes the lead and now has nobody on him at all. Uh, you can draw your own conclusions about that. I'm not quite sure what went down, uh, but yeah, basically the leader and P3 have now fallen back significantly. P3 also, I believe he has some damage on his rear end from his own teammate, and he's going to get passed up the inside by car number eight. Never mind, car number eight is going to get oversteer, and uh, that's an example of making the outside work. Good on uh, P3 there to hold that. We are now right up behind enemy number one, hoping to make a move sooner rather than later, getting a really good exit here, and... Um, I probably could have been a bit more aggressive here, perhaps tried to send it around the outside of this corner, which turns into the inside, but he does move over for a defensive line and then moves back once he realizes I'm not going to go for it anyway. 
Uh, he then goes slightly deep into this corner. This could yield a better run for us onto the straight, but we're going, we are going to overbreak and uh, pretty much ruin any chance we had of that. And then we drive off of the uh, off of the racing surface there. So, I mean, a lot going on. We get very close by the end of the straight heading into sunset, but not close enough to really do anything. And then absolutely botched sunset. And now we are just really, it's, it's really easy to compare how shitty we are now compared to these top guys as he pulls away from us pretty uh, sophisticatedly, pretty confidently. That's probably a better word. Um, not very sophisticated of me. Car number six looking to make a move up the inside of car number 10, uh, who looks like Lightning McQueen has already made his way up the inside somewhere that I didn't even see. Side by side with 10, and this is now the fight for P3. This was the previous leader who's now sitting in P, what is this, P5. And uh, he's going to follow these guys through turn seven. Martini goes a bit wide here, able to pull back onto the track before the leader gets his nose up there. This was previous P3, now sitting in P6, and this group as a whole is really starting to condense. Lightning McQueen has made his way to the front, so he is now in P2. Ow! I burned my eyes on how red hot those brakes were. Uh, that's us at the back, right up behind enemy number one. Once again, car number eight, looking to send it. Actually, no, we're not looking to send it. We're looking to follow this guy through and maybe get a move done onto the straight. Realistically, that's probably the best place to get a move done. The leader heading into sunset takes a really nice narrow line here. It looks like he's going to get his car right up in between the inside of this corner and car number six. Not quite able to do it. Settling behind him. Some flashing going on ahead. Some flashing going on from car number one, who's probably pretty upset about uh, what happened to him. And uh, this guy actually reads those lights and lets him pass so good on car number six but then um car number one's gonna slide out immediately and um great tactics from car number six there to let car number one take that inside line and spin himself out car number four meanwhile previous p3 looking to claim p4 for himself uh, as car number four up the inside of six as we come through corners three four and five out of them heading on to corner six and car number six has got the inside up ahead lightning mcqueen is looking to make a move around the outside possibly and um, not going to happen. He's just going to back off. Six and four making a bit of contact. All of this fighting is bringing everybody further and further back. We are still behind this other guy, enemy number one, and uh, pretty, pretty far behind him at the moment. But we are enjoying watching all of the fighting. We're watching our relatives. We're looking ahead through every single corner. We are seeing the battling, and we know that this race is coming to us. We have, I think we have four laps left at this point. So we've got, we still have a little bit of time and people are going to get more aggressive as the race goes on. Car number six, sending it up the inside of turn 13, I think that is, and it causes a backup. All three of those guys get involved. We are up the inside and that's the benefit of being just far enough back that you're able to react to stuff like that. And that move will put us up from P7 to P5. So, um way better result than I was honestly expecting when I realized I was car number 16 I am losing my shit right now in my head trying to keep it cool uh, just really happy with my pace overall this race it's been low 203s on just about every single clean lap this is the gap to the cars behind and it doesn't look like anybody's going to be able to do anything into sunset it's enough for us all to take our own racing line through sunset that's a uh, almost a different line for every car car number six vanishes to the right and sure enough he had to pull into the pit lane so does car number four for a penalty for both of those guys too many incidents they were getting way too aggressive at the front that'll move us up into p4 as we cross on to the penultimate lap we now basically have no pressure from behind, at least for the rest of this lap, so I'm focused on the uh, the fight happening ahead. This is the fight for P2 between car number 2 and car number 10 or car number 8. I'm not sure. That's an enemy number 1 car who drives into the dirt and kind of kills his run, which is, this is a, uh, a pretty important place to have a good run. He's going to move to the right side to defend the inside of the next corner, and then he kind of pulls back around to the outside as McQueen wasn't really close enough to go for it. I mean, he probably could have, but he respects the pace of car number 10 I assume this is the gap between us and them still pretty large coming across the last lap and if there was a spider on this guy's flash button it must have had babies because he's still flashing me and the battle for p2 is raging and look at that move switching to the inside at the last moment although it was very late and he ends up actually just pushing the other guy off of the track and you know that this guy is going to be flashing. He's an enemy number one, baby. And he is going to be flashing basically for the rest of this lap. Uh, 
If it's going to be enough to distract this guy, I don't know. He could possibly launch back into P2. I, at this point, am much more worried about losing my position, uh, defending through that corner and kind of parking it on the apex. He's not going to make a move here. I don't think anybody really makes a move here unless you have a significantly better run or the car ahead really makes a mistake heading in there. The flashing continues up ahead, and I'm pretty sure that that flashing is all due to the move that McQueen made there. There's uh, no question as to uh, if there's a spider on that man's keys. My brakes are surprisingly not hot at all. The guys behind me are absolutely cooked, heading onto the straight for the final time. And uh, we're gonna pull over to take a defensive line. As we edge closer to the braking zone, we move back to the racing line. And there's not much he's gonna be able to do here. If you wanna defend Sunset, you absolutely can, especially on the final corner. I take an extremely tight line. He's sliding out. There's freaking fireworks going off in the background. He's flashing me as I cross the line. And that'll be a P4 secured for us in the highest split we have ever been in um, as we edge ever closer to... Um, uh, a casual professional of iRacing. This was an interesting moment. This was after the race had ended. Pay attention to this guy because he is not going to stop his car. That guy got so fucking lucky. Still made contact. This guy goes flying into the wall. I don't know what was going on here with this guy. Uh, but yeah, that would basically be the end of that race. Here are the results. We made it to 4K. We made it to 4K. <sighs> I was pretty emotional when this happened. I was honestly, I was really emotional. Um, it's been a long road. We were pretty shitty at the beginning, not gonna lie. We were pretty shitty. We're able to hang with the big boys now um, at somewhat. If you guys enjoyed this, please head to over to my channel, subscribe, like, and check out some more videos. I'm sure you will find them amusing. Thank you so much.